Gary Simon of Corsetro, and welcome to the seventh lesson that's a part of the 100% free Ethereum smart contract development for beginners course. Boy, that's a mouthful. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about inheritance, which up to this point, we've only been working with one smart contract, really. And usually in more robust decentralized apps, you have multiple smart contracts that are derived or inherited from each other. So this allows you to avoid redundancy and reusing code. So looking at our uh, Corsetro or courses contract that we've been working on, we're going to create a new base contract up at the top. And we're going to call this contract owned. And inside of here, we're going to put in address owner function owned and this is our constructor which gets ran once when the smart contract is created owner equals message dot sender and you'll if you've been following along throughout this course all this looks pretty familiar to you modifier is only owner so we can add a modifier in this uh, base contract and we'll require that the message dot sender is equal to the owner all right and if it's if it is, then we'll run the function body from which this modifier has been placed. So that's what our base contract looks like. So how do we make courses inherit from owned? Well, is owned. Very, very simple. So the way we're going to test to see if this works, we'll simply add is owned, the modifier to set instructor. In other words, only the smart contract creator, the owner of the smart contract will be able to add new instructors and nobody else. So what we'll do now is, by the way, make sure your Web3 provider is selected environment and the test RPC is running in your console and we'll hit create. Oh, we have an issue. Let me make sure, oh, only owner, oh, sorry about that, is owned. I'm mixing up my, uh, my variable names here. <laughs> so now what we want to do is just to give this a test, we'll try a different account just to make sure it errors. So we'll copy the address, put it in uh, quotes here, put in 43 for the age, name, whoever, name, whatever, last name. There we go. Set instructor. And we could see that it fails because this did not work. So we can see that this is now derived and that is basically in a very basic sense, like I mentioned, uh, how the inheritance works uh, with smart contracts. All right. So there's other things you can do like pass arguments, but we're not really going to focus on this. This is just a beginner course. All right. So now throughout the rest of this lesson, we're not going to really focus on inheritance, but we're going to focus on just a few other things uh, to, to get us to the point where we can deploy this contract in the next lesson. So a couple changes I wanna make before we get to that point in this smart contract is we're going to change every instance of type string for the first name and last name to bytes 16. And the reason is because strings, when it comes to uh, updating and deploying string types it's actually pretty costly on the Ethereum network. So if we can, you always get away with defining them as bytes. So byte 16 is basically 16 characters for the first name and last name. We're going to change this string type here, here, and here. So just about five places so far. And I also do want to add an event. So in our previous contract, we had an event for when a new instructor is added or updated. So let's add an event right here. And that is going to be event instructor info. Inside of here, we're going to have a bytes 16 of F name, bytes 16 of L name, and a UINT inside integer of age. And I don't know why I always do that. That should not be semicolon, it should be commas. All right, great. So now let's add that. At the end of set instructor, we'll call the event and we'll do that by instructor info, the event name. We pass in F name, L name, and age. 
All right, great. So this right here, this contract is all done and we're not going to modify any further in this course. So at this point, what we want to do is install an NPM package called light server. So this light server will, instead of us just accessing the project directly on the hard drive at index.html, we're, it's going to set it up in a server environment. And this way, when we use MetaMask, and I'll show you how to install that momentarily, uh, the Web3 instance will be able to be injected into the DOM. Otherwise, if you're just running the file on your hard drive, MetaMask will not work. So that's why this step's necessary. So we're going to come over to our console and we're going to run npm install. Make sure you're in the project folder, light hyphen server, and then save dev. I'm not going to do that. I already installed it. So let that run through. And once it's done, you can then go back to your code editor and make sure under dev dependencies here in the package.json file, you have light server. Once you do, we can come back to our console and type in npm run dev. So this will launch a browser and there we go. Awesome. So next we want to make sure that we have MetaMask installed. And so MetaMask is basically a Chrome extension that brings Ethereum to your browser, provides you with a wallet and the ability to connect to different test networks as well as the main Ethereum blockchain. So the way you use it, by the way, like I mentioned, it's a Chrome extension. So just go to Google and type in um, MetaMask Chrome extension, click add to Chrome. You can, when you click it, it's accessible in your toolbar after it's installed right here. So you click, I agree. And the first time you run it, create a new vault, hit okay. It's gonna have these, uh, this vault created uh, and these 12 words can restore your account, do that. And then once you're there at this test net, um, in this section, you'll have a screen similar to this uh, that's shown right here. So if yours says zero ETH, you can just click buy and then go to the Rossman test net and say request one ether from faucet. This doesn't actually cost you any money because again, we're on the test network. So click this and you'll have the ether show up momentarily in your account up here. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our Remix IDE and we're gonna change this to from Web3 provider to injected Web3. All right, so now this address is basically this address up here. All right, so at this point, now we can go ahead and create this. And this time we see this little window show up and this didn't happen before with the JavaScript EVM or the uh, the sorry the test RPC, um, and this is because this test network more accu accurately depicts what happens when you're interacting with a smart contract like on the live blockchain. So we're going to hit submit, and this will actually take a little bit of time for it to run through. And while we're waiting for that, we'll go to compile and details, copy the interface ABI. And this is something we've done quite a bit throughout this course if you've been following. And we're gonna to go to our index.html. Come down here under Web3 ETH contract. Save that. We'll go back to the Remix IDE. And we'll see it has now been added. You can see this is reflected above here as well. So it's no longer pending. We can copy this section right here for the address and go back and paste that right there. So now we can hit save. And at this point, I'm going to conclude this video. And in the next lesson, we're gonna wrap everything up by making some adjustments to our Web3 UI project and then interacting with it on the test network.